well today I am going to talk about free electron laser and in this I will discuss the following magnetic wiggler which is a component very essential for phase matching in a free electron laser and also for nonlinear interaction of electron beam with radiation. Then we will discuss the kinematics of radiation generation, deduce an expression for operating frequency of a free electron laser. Then we will discuss the scheme of obtaining response of an electron beam, relativistic electron beam to radiation and magnetic wiggler and the process we will formulate a quantity called wonder motive force. We will discuss the mechanism of beam bunching and then discuss the phase space behavior of electrons, beam electrons and the presence of wonder motive force. Well, the references for today's presentation are a book by T. C. Marshall, Free Electron Lasers, then a book by Professor C. S. Liu and myself, Interaction of Electromagnetic Waves with Electron Beams in Plasmas and another book ultraviolet and soft x-ray free electron lasers by Schumser, Tollis and Rosbach. Well, we have already learnt a device called Serenko free electron laser in which we learnt that an electron beam which was sent through a waveguide and an electron beam was launched from here and this dielectric loaded waveguide which had dielectric lining in the interior, this is dielectric lining here and when the electron beam was passing through this waveguide with the appropriate velocity it radiated electromagnetic waves. And the condition for radiation was that the beam velocity V B has to be close to or slightly more than the wave frequency upon z component of k where z is the direction of along the axis of the waveguide. So, whenever the wave phase velocity in the direction of beam propagation equals the beam velocity then there is a resonant interaction between the electron and the wave and it can produce Serenko radiation. Now, obviously in free space where the velocity of light is c then this condition cannot be matched and hence a free electron or an electron beam traveling in free space by itself cannot radiate electromagnetic waves. The issue is that is it possible without slowing down the wave to generate radiation coherent radiation by an electron beam. Well, if we really examine the scheme of rather the, the fundamental issue of energy conservation and momentum conservation in a radiation generation process, then it turns out that Serenko condition essentially implies momentum conservation and energy conservation in a radiation generation process and that cannot be satisfied in free space by a non by an electron which is not moving with the velocity c or higher than c. Consequently, people discovered a, a scheme that if there is some agency to account for momentum conservation then one can have radiation generation. In a free electron laser it is the magnetic wiggler that does this job. Magnetic wiggler in principle is a kind of magnetic field whose polarity is in one direction here and in a reverse direction here then in this direction here and then in this direction there. So, these are the lines of force I am drawing, drawing in certain region of space. If you can create a magnetic field of this sort then we can call this magnetic field to have zero frequency because it is static in time, but this has a variation in suppose z direction. So, if you can produce a magnetic field of this sort by putting some magnets here suppose this is a bar magnet here, I put a bar magnet here 
this may be my north pole here, this may be south pole here and north pole of this magnet is there and south pole is here. So, if I put magnets of alternate polarities, then when we can generate a magnetic field of this sort, which we can call as Wigler magnetic field, whose dependence on a space will be of this form, some amplitude exponential i k w z, where the distance between two these vertical upward lines I will call as the Wigler period from here to here or Wigler wavelength lambda w and k w I will define as 2 pi by lambda w. So, what happens is that if you launch an electron beam in this configuration in the system in this direction with a velocity say v 0. Then what will happen if this electron beam is traveling through this structure in the presence of an electromagnetic wave, then the interaction of the electron beam is not merely with the electromagnetic wave, but it is in the presence of the regular magnetic field. So, it is possible that the photon that is to be generated or added to the system, the energy it is gaining from the electron beam and momentum also it is gaining from the electron beam, but part of the momentum is transferring to the Wigler magnetic field. So, magnetic field plays a role of momentum balance and I can write down this expression in a slightly different way. Suppose, I have an electron coming with momentum p 0, which is in the z direction. And energy of this electron I can certainly write as E is equal to mass into C square. This is the energy of an electron beam. If M is the relativistic mass, which is equal to rest mass multiplied by gamma, relativistic gamma factor, and gamma factor is equal to 1 plus P0 square upon m square c square to the power half. This is the electron momentum and this is the energy, this is called the gamma factor. Now, what we expect that if an electron has to emit a photon then energy of the electron after emission of photon should be equal to initial energy minus h cross omega if omega is the frequency of radiation of photon that it is generating and final momentum should be equal to initial momentum minus h cross k of the laser the photon is generated, but because electron loses more momentum than a photon can take and hence what we do we say that part of this momentum electron initially had a momentum p 0 h cross k momentum it has given to a photon and plus some momentum h cross k w momentum it has given to Wigler magnetic field. So, the total momentum lost by the electron is sum of these two terms. This is the additional quantity I have added because the interaction is taking place in the presence of a magnetic Wigler and electron is under a constant low range force due to the Wigler magnetic field. So, if this is possible then if you work out that final energy of the electron should also be related to final momentum by the same relation which is m c square gamma f final gamma and gamma f should be equal to 1 plus final momentum square upon m square c square to the power half. If one puts it in there and realizes that h cross k and h cross k w are much much smaller than p 0, 
may be million times or at least tens of thousand times smaller than this quantity. So, one can use binomial expansion and once you put gamma f or p f value in this expression and solve this equation, then one obtains essentially using equation number 1 and 2, one obtains the condition for radiation generation is equal to omega equal to k w plus k into beam velocity which we call as v 0. So, the electrons which are moving with momentum p 0 they will have a drift velocity v 0 and the energy and momentum conservations considerations give you this equation which is a modified version of Serenkov resonance condition. So, electron is not in Serenkov resonance with the laser, but it is in resonance with a, a strange kind of force called ponderomotive force that is arising due to the laser and the Wigler magnetic field and we shall introduce this concept of ponderomotive force in a little while. But this is an important condition and if we are having this interaction taking place in free space obviously in the presence of the Wigler then I can assume that omega is nearly equal to k c due to boundary effects this is slightly modified, but if boundary effects are not considered then omega is exactly equal to k c the frequency of radiation and wave number of radiation they are related by this relation. If I put this expression in this equation what I get is omega turns out to be equal to just put this equal to k is, k is equal to omega by c and then this becomes equal to k w v 0 divided by 1 minus v 0 by c. And if you can make v 0 close to c then you can have this frequency as large as you wish. So, just by bringing an electron beam of velocity very close to c one can produce radiation tunable radiation of desired frequency. If I multiply the denominator and numerator by a factor 1 plus v 0 by c 1 plus v 0 by c then this can be written as k w v 0 upon 1 minus v 0 square by c square into 1 plus v 0 by c. This quantity for a beam whose velocity is very close to c of the order of c v 0 by c can be taken like 1 this v 0 can be replaced by 1 obviously one has to be careful in this quantity, but by definition gamma 0 the initial Lorentz factor of the electron beam can also be written as 1 minus v 0 square by c square to the power minus half and hence this frequency of radiation of F L can be written as operating this is called operating frequency of F L. of free electron laser which is usually called as F E L is omega is equal to or approximately equal to 2 gamma 0 square k w c well this is all this is the expression. There are two important issues in here. Number one, the frequency can be controlled by k w in terms of wavelength. If I have to write, then the wavelength of radiation turns out to be Wigler period divided by 
2 gamma 0 square. If you choose shorter regular period, then the radiation frequency will be shorter and you can also reduce the wavelength of generated radiation by increasing the energy of the electron beam. People would prefer to write gamma 0 in terms of the beam voltage because after all these electron beams are produced by some acceleration field. So, people normally write down in terms of well energy we write down in terms of million volt or something. So, I can write down gamma 0 in terms of energy if I have to write this is equal to E 0. Well, this is 1 plus kinetic energy rather kinetic energy upon m c square. So, if you are producing an electron beam by accelerating through a potential difference, the, suppose the potential difference is v 0 and E 0 is the magnitude E is the magnitude of electron charge, then this is equal to m c square and m c square is about half million electron volt. So, if you have accelerated the electrons to energy of the or kinetic energy of the order of 1 MeV, then gamma is 3. If you have an electron beam of 10 MeV kinetic energy, then this is 21, gamma 0 is 21. So, what I am saying is that if you can increase the value of electron energy, then you can increase the radiation frequency immensely, typically like a square of energy. So, usually the wigglers that you can construct have wiggler period lambda w of the order of maybe 3 millimeter or bigger. Most wigglers have wiggler period around 1 or 2 centimeters, but one can also construct wigglers with wiggler period around 3 millimeter or 2 millimeter. And typical strength of the wiggler magnetic field is modulus of this quantity is typically of the order of one can have a few kilo gauss a 0.1 tesla. So, this is the kind of magnet field available by permanent magnets nickel magnets if one use bar magnets one can construct a wiggler magnetic field and one can produce coherent radiation in the infrared visible even at ultraviolet frequencies depending on the energy of the electron beam. If one chooses gamma 0 around 100 which means if you choose a beam of about 50 million electron volt energy then this quantity turns out to be let me put some numbers here for your uh, for, for some clarity. So, if I choose for an electron beam of energy E 0 of the order of say 50 MeV energy gamma 0 is of the order of 100 and wavelength of radiation is around 5 into 10 to minus 5 lambda w. So, if lambda w of the order of 1 centimeter, we are talking of lambda of the order of 0.5 micron half micron radiation which is visible light. So, you require for production of visible radiation using a wiggler of period 1 centimeter, one would require an electron beam of 50 MeV energy. For ultraviolet radiation either you reduce the value of lambda w or increase the value of beam voltage or beam energy and certainly this is possible. What has been recognized is that this wiggler could be a static wiggler, it could also be an electromagnetic wave. After all electromagnetic wave also has a strong magnetic field and maybe that can also play a role of momentum balance between electron and 
free electron radi uh, laser radiation. So, in that case you can really use laser as a wiggler. So, lambda w can be of the order of even 1 micron neodymium glass laser if one use then the wiggler period wiggler wavelength is of the order of 1 micron and in that case if you have taken into consideration the finite frequency of radiation in this case lambda turns out to be around wiggler wavelength divided by 4 gamma 0 square and one can produce x-rays and that is a very fascinating possibility. So, people have been trying for quite some time producing coherent x-rays by using laser as a wiggler and using electron beams of 100 around 100 MeV energy. I think that is the exciting possibility that you can increase the frequency of radiation immensely. Some experiments were conducted a little while ago on generation of uh, ultraviolet violet radiation or visible radiation by using gyrotron as a pump because gyrotron can produce radiation in the millimeter wavelength regime. So, you do not really have to put a DC magnetic wiggler one can use electromagnetic waves as wiggler also. So I think this is an interesting device. It has a tremendous advantage over the conventional lasers because the frequency of this device is frequency tunable. Wavelength can be changed by changing the energy of the electron beam. This tunability is a very important consideration, very fascinating consideration. And moreover, the efficiency of the device, if one uses tapered wigglers that we shall learn later. Uh, could be much higher than the conventional laser efficiency. So, it is I think a very important device that can produce radiation uh, over a very wide frequency range free electron lasers are operating over a very wide frequency range ranging from sub millimeter waves some millimeter wavelengths. Please remember that a frequency of 300 gigahertz is 1 millimeter wavelength. So, when you are talking of frequency greater than 300 gigahertz, then you are talking about lambda less than 1 millimeter wavelength and a special interest has come up at terahertz frequencies when the wavelength is or the frequency is omega upon 2 pi is around 1 terahertz means 1000 hertz and then infrared then visible then ultraviolet x rays so these are all the frequency bands in which free electron lasers can produce high powers well x rays i would say that that is still in the experimental stage but you can have very high powers at millimeter sub millimeter wavelengths and free electron lasers are a good candidate for plasma heating. They are good candidate for terahertz generation for various applications. Terahertz radiation has really become very important from two perspectives recently. One is for explosive detection and also for medical imaging. Obviously, the powers that you require are not that much as are produced by free electron laser. So, people are thinking of other ways to produce terahertz radiation, but wherever you require high powers then free electron laser is a device that can give you high powers. Well, let me give you 
a schematic of a free electron laser before I proceed further. So, free electron laser will certainly require a interaction region. Let me call this as the schematic of a free electron laser. Schematic of FEL. This will have essentially an interaction region which will have a Wigler magnetic field symbolically denoted like this. This is called interaction region. And then you require it to be fed by means of a electron gun or beam source. So, this is the electron beam source that produces an electron beam and the beam has to be relativistic. It could be a linear, linear accelerator or some other device that can produce MeV energy electron beam. The current in the electron beam has to be about a ampere or at least 100 of milli ampere. The electron beam is launched into this device and then you require a seed signal FEL seed signal that has to be amplified or it has to be a oscillator. It could be an oscillator then you do not require because there is some noise signal that is amplified by the electron beam. And then there are two things here radiation comes out here. So, you require a diagnostics or other a system to channelize radiation and then they require a beam dump. The spent beam is dumped here so called beam dump. And this is the FEL radiation free electron laser radiation. Very special techniques have to be employed to produce good quality electron beam. The energy spread tolerable in the electron beam is not more than a few percent and that is a very serious issue. The transportation of the beam from the source to the interaction region is also a serious issue. The beam should not suffer excessive divergence on its way to interaction region to arrive at the interaction region. So, some care has to be exercised here. And the Wigler magnetic fields, there are two kinds of Wigglers. One is a permanent magnetic Wiggler. in which you have essentially an arrangement of magnets as I showed you earlier like this. This magnet has a suppose this has a north pole here and south pole there or north pole suppose this has a north pole here, this is south pole here, the north pole other north pole is here, south pole is here and then you can have there in the reverse polarity like this. So, ultimately you can have these kind of magnets, but what really people do they do not use this is called a linear wiggler. If the lines of force are only vertically upward or vertically downward then such a magnet field is called a linear wiggler. People normally have a circularly polarized wiggler. So, what they do they put a magnet here a magnet there then they put suppose this is my z direction and this is my x direction. So, these two magnets are these pairs of magnets are placed on x axis here parallel to x axis, but then in between if you have magnets placed on the y axis. So, that the line of force here is like this here is like this. But here the line of force is vertically upward and here is the vertically downward. So, by having magnets one placed on top here and one placed underneath on the y axis, then one can produce a magnetic field of this form V w is equal to some constant A w x cap plus i y cap 
exponential of i k w z. I have used a complex notation here, which certainly this expression implies that the real part of the right hand side is to be taken. It means that the Wigler magnetic field will have a x component because of these magnets and a y component because of the magnets placed along the y axis with alternate polarities. And the net magnetic field in this system is take the real part. So, V Wigler magnetic field has a x component which is equal to amplitude A w cos k w z and B w y which is A w sin k w z. K w is the regular number, A w is the regular amplitude and these two components are out of phase by pi by 2. This is called circularly polarized Wigler. Wigler magnetic field will also have a z component, but you can choose z component of magnetic field to be 0 on the axis of the system and away from that there is finite, but you are launching your beam through the center of the device where B w z is 0. So, this is a reasonable approximation for this field. This is how you produce a by permanent magnets you can produce a Wigler. Well, you can also produce a Wigler by having winding on a tube. Take a tube and have helical windings on it like this. So, helical windings are going over here, but then you have windings carrying current in opposite directions and in between there is a reverse polarity magnetic field and just this kind of configuration also. So, by carrying currents like this you can produce a regular magnetic field of this form and that is really a quite common uh, practice to employ permanent rather electromagnet electromagnets rather current coils helical current coils to produce this sort of magnetic field. And an important issue is to examine the kinetics of the process how this Wigler is going to help the momentum conservation in the radiation generation process. Well, one thing that one can clearly see that if you launch an electron beam here, if there were no Wigler magnetic field then the electron beam will travel through the system without any deviation. If you ignore the space charge effect of the beam electrons, their repulsion on each other, then this beam will travel without any modification in its velocity. However, when this C is a magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of propagation either B w x or B w y or a combination of both, in that case the particle trajectory will be modified, it becomes curved. So, if an electron is going like this and suppose it sees a magnetic field like this, then this electron will try to gyrate about this line of force, it will be lifted upwards, but as it travels further then the force is reversed and it will take downward. So, the ion the electron will go up and down, up and down, up and down. So, the path will be wiggled. So, a, a straight electron which was moving with a constant velocity with a unidirectional velocity, it is going up and down away from this plane of the paper and then into the paper and so on. This is oscillating like this. In the case of a wiggler, this will have a motion in x direction as well. So, that, that is the important issue that the electron which was moving with a DC velocity, it has acquired some sort of a velocity which is a function of time or distance. Now, this radiation any you know that any accelerated electron radiates. So, if you are launching millions of electrons each of them will radiate obviously, the radiation emitted by this is called undulator radiation. There is another term for Wigler called undulator and this radiation is called undulator radiation and uh, the frequency of that will be essentially the frequency of this wiggle, but that is not of much 
much interest. More interesting thing would be the coherent radiation they generated by the electron beam not the spontaneous radiation or not the radiation by different electrons under acceleration. So, let me examine the issue of coherent radiation by this electron beam. So, I would like to examine the kinetics of this process by examining the response of electrons to Wigler and then the radiation signal called FEL signal or FEL signal and first of all I would like to study the response independently that if the electron sees only Wigler what kind of change in velocity will occur and if it sees only the radiation signal what kind of change in its velocity will occur, but when both are present simultaneously what kind of effect will arise. So, that term is I call as the ponderative force. So, remaining part of my discussion will be focused on these three issues the response of electrons to a regular magnetic field, response of electrons to a radiation field as if there is no regular and then what is the modification caused when these two are present simultaneously. So, I would like to evaluate the nonlinear force that arises due to the coupling between the regular and the radiation signal. As we are dealing with million of electron volt energy, uh, volt energy of the beam, we are to consider the relativistic equation of motion. So, I will write down the relativistic equation of motion for beam electrons and I will ignore the effect of a space charge DC space charge of the beam. Now, this equation is a rate of change of momentum. So, momentum I will define P is equal to rest mass then gamma factor Lorentz factor into V and the equation is for fluid electron beam as a fluid the equation is delta P upon delta T plus V dot del P these two terms together as d p by d t rate of change of momentum is equal to the force on the electrons due to the electric field plus the force on the electron due to the magnetic field which is minus E V cross B. This equation has two terms on the right hand side the first is called the force due to the electric the or rather the electric force on the electrons of charge minus E and this is called the magnetic force and V is the drift velocity of electrons. I have ignored the pressure term assuming that the electrons have no thermal energy spread. Now, if I put this P is equal to m gamma V in this equation, this equation is normally written like this m outside delta delta t of gamma v multiplied by plus v dot del of gamma v is equal to minus e E minus E V cross B. To solve such equation, what we do? We use a process, the procedure of linearization that I discussed in my earlier lectures, that 
first write down the equilibrium and in equilibrium there was no DC magnetic field which was uniform and treat the Wigler and the laser fields to be as perturbed quantities. So, what we do first we write down the equilibrium, equilibrium is that the plasma has no field, no electric field no magnetic field and as a consequence the beam velocity is just uniform velocity v 0 and that is in the z direction. So, your electrons are traveling with velocity v 0 that is your the zeroth order particle motion particle velocity. Then we say that perturb this equilibrium by a Wigler, perturb the equilibrium by magnetic Wigler. And I am assuming my Wigler magnetic field to be of this form V w is equal to A w x cap plus i times y cap exponential of i k w z this is my Wigler. So, I say that the electron response to this Wigler field would be v will be equal to initial velocity v 0 plus some perturbation caused by this and I will call this perturbed quantity as v w. W subscript simply implies that this is the response due to Wigler field. So, what I do? I presume that A w is a small quantity and hence the response of electrons to A w or V w will also be a small quantity and we ignore the products of perturbed quantities. This is called the process of linearization. So, if I substitute this in the equation of motion, I can get a linearized equation of motion but how about gamma? You know that if the magnetic field is time independent, then the force from the electron is always perpendicular to V cross B, uh, rather force on the electron is V cross B which is perpendicular to velocity and this does not give rise to any energy exchange, energy change. So, gamma is a constant that becomes a great simplification. So, though velocity is changing, but magnitude of velocity does not change. So, we say that gamma is a constant gamma equal to gamma 0 which is equal to 1 minus v 0 square by c square to the power half minus half. This is a quantity which I am presuming to be constant well certainly it is a constant exactly constant in a magnetic field DC magnetic field. So, then the linearization becomes very simple and you get m gamma 0 common and you will get delta V w upon delta t the second term would be V 0 z cap plus V w dot del V, but del of V 0 is 0 because V 0 is a constant. So, del of V w will be there and how about the right hand side? Right hand side of the equation of motion will be there is no electric field. So, electric term force term is 0, the magnetic force is minus E, this is V 0 z cap plus V w cross B w. You may note here this small v, v w 
dot del V w this is a product of two perturbed quantities. So, we will ignore it and the product of V w and V w is also a product of perturbed quantities. So, we will ignore it. So, these two products we ignore this one and this one then this equation becomes m gamma 0 delta v w by delta t plus v 0 delta delta z of v w is equal to minus E V 0 Z cap cross B w. Please note V w is the response or the effect and V w is the cause the right hand side is a force that is the cause that creates V w. So, in the quasi steady state we believe that the response should have the same time and z dependence as the source. So, we say that V w can be written as say some quantity A w the amplitude exponential of i k w z because the right hand side has a no time dependence and z dependence of this form. So, we presume a solution like this. When I substitute this here the first term goes to 0 because there is no time dependence. So, this is gone to 0 and delta delta z when I put here is replaced by i k w. So, this equation simply gives me m gamma 0 i k w v 0 v w is equal to minus e v 0 z cap v w v w is circularly polarized field. So, let me write down the value this is a w outside and then this will be z cap cross x cap plus i y cap exponential of i k w z. This z cross x is minus y cap and z cross sorry z cross x is y cap and z cross y is minus x cap. So, this can be written as minus E V 0 A w just take this inside and this becomes z cross x is y cap and minus i x cap exponential of i k w z. If I can take minus i outside this becomes i times E V 0 a w x cap plus i y cap exponential of i k w z and this quantity a w into this quantity simply b w. So, this becomes rather simple this becomes simply i times e v 0 and this is b w sorry v 0 is a constant v w here then you can divide this coefficient and you will get v w is equal to simply i i will cancel out v 0 will cancel out you will get e b w b w is a vector here divided by m gamma 0 k w this is a very simple neat expression. If it were a DC static electric field uniform electric field magnetic field then E b upon m is known as cyclotron frequency. So, this is like effective cyclotron frequency due to the regular magnetic field divided by the regular wave number like omega by k divided by gamma 0 the relativistic gamma factor of the electron. So, the regular has produced a drift velocity on electrons on the electron of the beam and this is circularly polarized also if the wiggler is circularly polarized. Similarly, I would like to obtain the response of 
beam electrons to free electron laser radiation. So, let me write down laser radiation, laser or FEL signal. Well, one has to be a little careful about radiation. The wiggler we consider to be circularly polarized in the right handed sense and if we choose the laser signal also to be circularly polarized in the right handed sense, then the nonlinear coupling turns out to be 0. So, but if you consider the laser to be left circularly polarized and we shall probably uh, see the rationale for this a little while. But right now I assume that the laser is an electric electromagnetic wave with E L is equal to suppose amplitude is A L x cap minus i times y cap and exponential minus i omega t minus k z. Suppose my electromagnetic wave that I want to amplify at the expense of beam energy has the electric field like this. This is a transverse electromagnetic wave and obviously, if you work out the third Maxwell equation which says that curl of E L is equal to minus delta delta T of B L. This is the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction and if I replace del by I k and delta delta T by minus i omega because my field quantities are varying like this in the exponential way like this in time and z then I can certainly do this then B L I get is equal to k cross E L upon omega and because k is in the z direction. So, if I take z cross E L, then what you get is it turns out to be equal to A L upon omega and k is there, then z cap cross x cap minus i y cap into exponential term, the same factor as written there. But you get here when you take this in the interior, it turns out to be z cross x is y cap and z cross y is minus x cap. So, you get here i common i k upon omega and the thing that is left out is simply equal to E L. So, that is the interesting thing here that the laser magnetic field is expressible in terms of E L, but the coefficient outside is i k upon omega i comes because of this because z cross y is x cap minus x cap. So, i comes because of that. So, once I know my electric and magnetic fields and if I forget the Wigler, then the response of beam electrons can be written as V I k write down if I forget the Wigler response. The original beam velocity V 0 z cap plus some modification due to the laser called this V L. Now, this is an interesting quantity, uh, this is a uh, term that I have added here. I would expect that this should have the same T z variation as the electric field of the laser signal. So, now let me go over to our equation of motion, but that involves gamma also. I should be a little careful about gamma. Gamma is equal to 1 minus v square by c square to the power half, but now v is v 0 plus v l because this laser has an electric field. So, there is a possibility that the energy also changes. So, if this is a case here, but if I consider this V L to be very small as compared to V 0, V 0. So, that if we can score, ignore the square of this quantity, then you know because the we are expecting V L to be in the direction of electric field which is transverse. 
So, if this has no z component, then this is simply equal to 1 minus v 0 square by c square. There will be a term v l square term, but that is a product of perturbed quantity. So, we ignore it. And if I consider that, then this remains minus half please minus minus remains the same as gamma 0. So, if V L is presumed to be perpendicular to V L is perpendicular to assume to be perpendicular to V 0. If we assume and we will justify later we shall see that this is indeed valid. So, in case V L is perpendicular to z axis then gamma turns out to be unmodified within the limit of perturbation analysis and my equation of motion then becomes simple it becomes m gamma 0 outside this will be delta V L by delta t plus V 0 delta delta z of V L is equal to the force on the electron due to the laser V L minus E linearized force term would be V 0 z cap cross V of the laser. And if you substitute the value of V L here and assume this V L to be of this form a l some constant amplitude exponential minus i omega t minus k z because the source e l or b l they have this, this kind of dependence in t and z. So, in the quasi steady state v l which is the response to these fields must also have same t and z dependence and in that case life becomes simple replace delta delta t by minus i omega and delta delta z by i k and then we can write down the solution and I will write the solution as V l is equal to E e l upon m i gamma 0 omega. This is really simple neat expression. So, I have obtained linear responses of electrons to Wigler magnetic field as well as to laser signal independently. Now, when the two are present simultaneously what will happen we shall look into that issue in our next lecture. I think I close at this point. Thank you.